season one of the rehearsal with Nathan Fielder wrapped up this past Friday. Quick six episode season. Dave, did you get to check this out at all? I did not. I uh, I saw a lot of the, the discourse about Nathan Fielder's docu comedy HBO follow up to Nathan for you, but I did not. I did not check it out. You know, I, I think at the end of the day, it just the um, cringe. Not, not so not the cringe stuff. I think it's just the fact that it's like the docu vibe to it all. The fact that it's not not scripted is just mm-hmm. kind of the barrier to entry for me. Not usually something I'm into, but. I have appreciated seeing a lot of the reactions people have had. It's clearly a singular work from Nathan Fielder, something definitely significant that came out this summer. That much is clear. Yeah. You know, he, he as a creator and as a a visionary is so singular. He definitely brings that cringy vibe. Like you talked about, I think awkward might just be the word that kind of best describes him. And he, leans into that so hard that it, I, I definitely understand that his work is not for everybody. The rehearsal is a show that I really enjoyed for the most part, but definitely left me with a, a lot of thoughts and a lot of like confusing feelings about the show. I think there were moments and I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the memes about things online. I mean, the him, him with the laptop uh, desk around his, his shoulders and like dropping into different scenes has become a bit of a, on, uh, like a running joke online. But um, there are moments in this show that were probably some of the funniest moments of television that I've watched all year. And then, you know, there were moments where I was really left confused and uncertain about if, if what we were watching was really like ethical or well thought out. It's hard too because you know, it's a it's a docu comedy, uh, but we don't actually know how much of this is, as, you know, scripted versus unscripted. We don't know how much of this is actually what really like came out of this experiment. You know, taking these people in these situations where, uh, you know, they wanted to attempt something before they actually did it to see if you know how it could go. And he runs them through all these rehearsals to make sure it goes perfectly for them. Obviously, it never actually goes perfectly which is i think kind of the point of this but um you know it it, how much of that is actually what was intended versus what he wanted us to see so it's it's really interesting and i think the final episode has been something to talk about you know one of the the running arcs of the season is this woman named angela a very religious woman who wants to uh see what it's like to be a mom before she's actually a mother and so Nathan puts her in this dream house and has these child actors who are swapped in and out every couple of hours during the day. They try to find her a partner. The The partner that she finds through dating is this uh, guy who's really into numerology. He comes across as very strange and off-putting and uh, has become kind of a, a joke online. But um, it, throughout the, the season, Nathan finds himself more and more involved in her arc to be her partner in this and actually ends up where she leaves, but he's still going through with the rehearsal as like the father to these child actors now in this scenario. And one of the child actors gets attached to him and is very upset when, you know, he's not going to be able to come back as the rehearsal is ending and is confused about like who Nathan is in his life. His, his own father is not really involved. So he's kind of seeing Nathan as this other uh, father figure. And it it really just leaves you kind of wondering, like, man, what was this really thought out? Was this really done ethically in a way that where the the psychology and the the mental health impacts that this can have on the people involved? Was it really something that was considered fully? Um, Did it did the experiment of the show actually just take the show in unintended directions that they couldn't have planned for? It's it's pretty thought provoking. Uh, They did uh, renew it for season two. They announced that just a few hours before uh, the finale aired. So I'm I'm definitely interested to see how the discourse around the show will impact how things go in season two. I mean, Nathan Fielder is pretty open about taking things that are happening on the internet around his content and working that into his content. So I think we'll definitely be hearing from him about it in some way, but I think it's, it's hard because like I said, there are some moments that are just laugh out loud funny. 
um, on this show. The first episode, I would say, is probably an all timer. Um, there's a couple of other just like absolutely gold moments where you know, Nathan had attends a class that he actually had taught. He's rehearsing to understand the perspective of someone that's in the class. And so he's then talking to an actor playing him who's then responding to him in certain ways. Uh, uh, really like a mindfuck episode uh, episode and you get really down the rabbit hole there. Um, I would recommend it to anyone that, that enjoyed Nathan for you or, or wants to kind of have a, a challenging, but also really rewarding watch. Um, but definitely not where I expected the show to end up. So um, I, I would say I'm like pleased, but not as, not as thrilled about the show as I, I once was. It, when, when we were about halfway through the season, I was like, this might be a top 10 show for me for this year. We're probably not going to land it now. So uh bit of a disappointment, but also a lot to like. <laughs> 